What's up everybody, it's AJ with eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be checking out the Trailer Valet RVR12. It's going to be a device that you control via remote control. It's going to help you move your trailer without the truck. Let's check it out. A reason why you'd want to get something like this, besides it just looking cool, is using it to put that trailer away in a tight spot. You might not be able to get it there with a truck attached to it. So we just had this out behind the tent before we moved it out here today. And it was in a spot to where a truck wouldn't be able to tuck it back there. And you needed this to get it back there. So we needed this to get it back out of there. And you can see how easy it was to maneuver it because it does have 360 degrees of movement. You can spin it all around in any direction. and didn't have to worry about a truck being in front of the trailer at all. Now this is gonna be rated for 12,000 pounds, which is great because the Airstream camper we're using today is rated at 9,000. So you see it has no issues pulling across the parking lot. This is gonna be the remote control you get with it to control the RVR12. It feels really heavy duty. It is not just some plastic remote control that I'm gonna wear out dropping and breaking. I like that it can control up to 40 feet away. So you see I'm pretty far away from our Airstream. And that means I can walk all around it while I'm moving it to keep an eye on things. So I can drive it, don't need a spotter. I can go to any spot on it I need to to look to make sure I'm not gonna run into anything. You're gonna have three speeds that you can control. So this is gonna be the fastest speed now. I'm holding it all the way down. It's moving pretty good. It definitely moves faster than some of the other models I've worked with, with the trailer valets. Then you can toggle the switch down once and you're gonna get medium. So we'll go that one all the way down. See, not quite as fast, maybe a little bit better for when you got the spaces you need to keep an eye on. You don't want it to go flying out of control. You see it goes over that rock no problem. And you got the lowest speed as well and I suggest that when you're going to those tighter spots that you really want to be careful and watch what you're maneuvering. At the highest speed the joystick is going to be pretty sensitive so when you hit that it definitely goes even the slightest touch gets it to go. So you want to switch that down to a lower speed to where if you do hit it, even full tilt, it's not going to go too fast for you. That way you can keep an eye on things. While using it today, I've been really impressed with the treads. They seem to not get stuck on anything. It was pretty easy to watch them go over rocks and even uneven terrain. Our parking lot's not the best and it didn't seem to struggle with any of that. Even our part of our parking lot here with the big cracks in there, the softer ground still goes right over there. Not really any issues. Something I definitely noticed is you want to make sure you keep the longer part of the trailer valet behind where you want to go. So you see that the way we have it hooked up and it pulls much better with this section underneath the trailer tongue. It's giving it more to pull against. Now when we're going to go back in the spot, I'm going to flip it around. So I can start backing it up, walk over this trailer, make sure I have plenty of space as I back it up and I can adjust while watching it. Now that we got our camper in place, I think overall I'm very impressed by this. It was really easy to use, easy to hook up. It was easy to control with the remote. It took me no time at all to get used to how it controlled and how to move it around. And then just being so free to be able to walk around, check the tight spaces on my own, not have to yell to somebody or wait for somebody to yell at me, and really maneuver a trailer in places you wouldn't be able to do with a truck. So I think it works out really well, especially if you want to get all that you can out of the space you got when you're putting your trailers away. When it comes to putting together, it's pretty easy. We're going to pin in the ball. Get it in position. Now I already threaded in our two and five sixteenths inch ball here. That's gonna work with this trailer setup. Make sure the plate is installed around the ball. So you set that into place, thread the ball in, then you know that plate's not gonna come back out because that plate's gonna push up against the coupler to tighten it up. So we have it lined up. We wanna make sure this is straight up and down, not at an angle. 
So I'm gonna lower the trailer down onto the ball. And then lower a little bit more. Make sure it's seated on that plate. And we'll get the tool that's included. What you're gonna do is put it in these notches and use that to tighten up the plate to the coupler. So I'm gonna go this way, turn it, and that's just gonna push up and make sure there's no play in there. You don't want that moving around. That looks pretty good there. Looks like it's pushed up into place, not moving. So we're latched in. Now with it all hooked up, we're ready to bring our jack up on the trailer and then go ahead and move it. Now when you're done using it, you wanna make sure you plug it into charge. It's gonna run for 30 minutes without needing a charge and it's gonna take two hours to get it back up to a full charge. So we'll plug in our port here in the back and then also make sure you plug in the remote. So it's gonna have it on the side right here. You got the angled plug, goes to the remote, push that in, and it's charging. Well, I think that does it. Thanks for hanging out and hope this helped.